Whether you need high frequency switching signals, more versatility with your PWM, or maybe you're just tired of using analog ride and getting a boring 490Hz wave, the Atmega hardware timers have your back. So in this video I'll use the timer counter 0 to generate the necessary PWM to drive a switch mode power supply. And yes, I'll still be using my Frankenstein dual inline package microcontroller. There are just a few registers for this timer and I won't bore you with them now because I'll just explain how to use them during the tutorial. The first thing we want to do is set the mode of operation. I'm going to use the fast PWM mode. To set this we need to use the timer counter control registers A and B. And there's three specific bits to do this, which are the WGM0 bits. And here we have two different options to choose from, either 011 or 111. I'm going to choose the latter because this gives us more flexibility with generating PWM. But the downside is that we can only use one output compare instead of two. So let's start by adding this to our code. I just want to point out that if you're using the Arduino ID, there's no problem at all. You can just copy my code and paste it in the setup function so that it will be executed once at startup. Next we have to set the compare output mode and there's two bits in the TCCR0A register for doing this. In the table for fast PWM mode, we can see that we have four options and I'm going to choose the third, so one zero to have the not inverting mode. And this means that the duty cycle is going to be proportional to the value stored in the output compare zero B register. This will just make everything more intuitive. So we can go ahead and add this to the code as well. For the timer counter control register B, we can ignore the force output compare bits because these apply to non-PWM modes. So all that's left are the three clock select bits in this register. So basically we just get to choose how slowly our timer counts. I want it to run at 8 megahertz so that the output frequency will be as high as possible. So no prescaler. And this just means that we set the CS00 bit to 1 and the other ones stay to the default 0. And once again we can add this to our code. The last thing to do is to set our pin as an output so that we can use it to drive whatever we want. I'm going to do this with the data direction register or you can just use a pin mode function in the Arduino IDE. Before testing this thing out on a real circuit, I'd like to take just a moment to thank our sponsor PCBWay. If you've worked at all with any kind of electronics, you definitely know that PCBs are the backbone of all kinds of electronic devices. And this is where our sponsor comes in. PCBWay is a leading producer of high quality PCBs. And having ordered from them many times, I can confidently say that they offer great products and service at a great price. Not only that, but they also provide 3D printing, CNC machining, and PCB assembly. I also want to remind you that they're having the 7th Project Design Contest, which is a great event where anyone can participate by submitting one or more of their electronics projects and win some awesome prizes. So to take your projects to the next level, head over to PCBWay.com and check out their awesome PCBs with the link in the description. Okay, so let's go ahead and try a little test here. I'm going to connect the output PWM to a MOSFET that's part of a simple boost converter, and this way we can see if it's working. If you're doing this, remember to connect the load to the output, because with no load, a boost converter will theoretically produce infinite voltage, and we definitely do not want this. The input supply is going to be 5 volts, and I'm going to use this to power a 12 volt light bulb. Looking at the PWM, which is the important thing, we can see that it's running, and its frequency is about what we expect, which is 8 MHz divided by 2 to the 8th power, because 8 are the number of bits in the timer, which is about 31.25 kHz. And we can see that it's pretty close. To vary our duty cycle, we just have to write values between 0 and 255 in the output compare register B, and we can do this in our infinite loop, and we can see that periodically the output voltage changes. As another simple test to visualize the duty cycle, I wrote this quick sketch that changes the brightness of an LED, and we can see that it is turning on and off slowly, which confirms that our program is working fine. Now before you might have been wondering why I chose uh, one of these two sub modes essentially and the reason for choosing the one I did is because we can use the output compare register A to vary slightly the frequency of the PWM by restricting the maximum value at which the timer gets to. In this way we can make it reset to zero before it gets to 255 and this makes the period shorter. This gives more flexibility for power supplies because usually we want higher frequencies 
frequencies and just 31 kilohertz. Okay, so this is pretty much it for the video. Let me know what you think in the comments, in particular if you want to try this out. It's not a difficult project in my opinion. So thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you in the next video.